Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, sorry if you can hear the guy mowing outside. Um, yeah, it's annoying. But anywho, I wanted to get a quick video out there while I still can. Um, the reason I haven't been posting is because my headset broke, so I can't really make videos on my laptop. But anyways, I wanted to make a video about making content with nothing but free and open source software, and I mean making music, 3D models, video editing, yada yada yada, stuff of that nature. So let's start with video editors. Um, the first one we have, well, actually, wait, the first one we have, which I don't have installed because of the weird dependencies, I'll probably install it later as an app image when I edit this video, is Caden Live. Um, and this is an editor you probably know of. It's used a lot in the Linux community. It's um, very well known. It's KDE's official video editor. And it's really, really good. Another editor that I haven't tried yet, but apparently is going to be super powerful and is actually made by a very big YouTuber um, who makes very well edited videos is Olive Editor. Um, it's made by Matt KC, and this looks like a really cool editor I should try out, and uh, it's also free and open source software, so, uh, right here, this is the source code. It looks kind of basic still, but who knows. But yeah, that's cool. And then um, that's kind of it for video editors. I just covered them briefly. Now we have 3D modeling. And in that category, we have Blender, which you guys probably definitely know of. Um, so like, yeah, Blender. I can actually pull up something I've been modeling um, recently. Uh, so, sunglasses. So, it's really useful for modeling and stuff. And then I can pull up something else. So, coffee cup. Why not? Here's a coffee cup. Um, what else? Uh, creepy Tux. I made this just as a meme. That's Creepy Tux. And if you want to look at my Blender projects, um, If you want to look at my Blender projects, they are on GitLab at gitlab.com slash oglo12 slash blender dash projects. And yeah, there we go. So um, the next uh, thing you can use for 3D modeling is Blockbench. This is used for, not for general purpose modeling, but more for blocky style modeling, because it doesn't have all the tools like grab one vertice to move it around. What it actually has is um, you can it's really simple to use, but because it's so simple, it also um, because it's so simple, it's not as powerful as Blender, but it's really easy to use. So like I can scale it, uh, and it's just a cube. And actually this is what Mojang uses to model stuff in Minecraft, which is kind of cool. And you can add animations too. So like... For my Minecraft like game, I used Blockbench to model the player, so I can open that up. Um, 
open. Um, dev simply assets assets models entity player dot bb model this is a block bench model and a lot of software just like they support blender also support block bench it's a very well known piece of software also you can change how block bench looks um, in the themes tab so like here's the default dark theme light theme contrast crimson this is what i've been using uh portland uh perplexed cherry box uh frost this is another really cool theme that i've used in the past blob that's a cool theme retro wave and block morphism uh, uh this seems to be a new one but i'm gonna stick on crimson but here's my player and I can also add the default texture because I think I made one I can show you some of the animations I gave him because animating in block bench is extremely easy which is one of the reasons I'll recommend it to new to modeling people who just want to make some quick little blocky models And I can apply to untextured faces. So yeah, here's my um, player. It's a lot like Minecraft's player. But um, in the animations tab, I've got a few animations. So if I um, select everything to open up their uh, nodes or whatever you want to call them, you can see them here and I put them down here. And I can play the animation. So like here's the walking animation and it just loops. And then here's the placing animation for placing a block. Here's the dying animation. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, here's the pain animation. Just jolt of the head. Here's the animation for when they join the game. Uh, leaving the game. Uh, spin attack. You know, all these random animations, but they're super easy to add because block bench just makes it super easy. You just move around the limb. And like in Blender animation isn't that hard either, but it's just super easy in something like block bench. But yeah, that's block bench in a nutshell. Um, all right, then we have music production. And, oh boy, so there's Audacity, which you guys probably know of, but uh, Audacity is a bit sketchy because they were acquired by a company that started adding tel telemetry, like they're sending the sounds you're making to law enforcement, stuff like that. Just no way. Um, you can actually install Audacity without internet access by using Flatpak. <clears throat> so I'll do that real quickly. Uh, if I can type. Um, so I'll do two, Audacity, Team Audacity, install. And I'll also make sure I have flat seal on the system. Yes, I do. Flat seal. And what I'll do is I'll go to the Audacity tab and I'll turn off network. And I'll turn off IPC. And that should, well, actually, I'll turn on IP, IPC because I don't know if that's actually uh, needed. But um, you can change settings in here like, um, like no, I don't want my device to be visible to Audacity. Um, although if it's connected to the internet, Aud uh, if it's not connected to the internet, Audacity won't really be able to do anything. But... Um, yeah, so just change whatever settings, but definitely turn off network, because Audacity doesn't need the internet. So now, um, you can open up Audacity, and it's a very straightforward application. 
I don't know what that's about, but it should just open. So yeah, here we go. So you can open uh, tracks in here. So um, um, I can open an I can open up another. God, this long lawn mower. Anywho, uh, I can open up a song here. So I can do a song I made um, for my game. And I played a little bit of the song. Um, I'll play it later because I actually used um, uh, another piece of software in this category to actually make it. So you can um, you can select parts of the track. So I can go up here to effect fading, or like a, let's do volume compression. I can amplify, and this is how you can make deep fried. Um, uh, deep fried audio. I will obviously not play this giant block of audio because it will probably wreck my speakers. But yeah, this is deep fried audio right here. Um, I'm going to exit save project before closing. No. Um, all right. Ooh, sorry. Uh, next thing we have is LM. L M M S. Um, personally, I could not figure out how the heck to use this, and it seems kind of basic. But um, if I sudo pacman s l m m s, and then I run l m m s. Yeah. Um. You have some settings. Uh, and this is LMMS, and personally, it confuses the heck out of me. So I'm not really going to cover this, but it's a music DAW. So um, it's a DAW. It's, it's like what people who use FL Studio would use if they wanted to use a FOSS alternative. Um, but... If you wanted to make some, and I'll remove it now because I don't want it. If you want something to just like place down notes and make something that sounds good, uh, I've got you covered. There's something called Jumbox, jumbus.bitbucket.io. And I will have um, any relevant links linked in the description that I mentioned in this video. When you go to Jumpbox, you'll want to go to Preferences and check everything except for Auto Play on Load and always find Note Volume. And you'll also probably want to set your layout and set your theme. Um, yeah. And I have my layout on Long. That's kind of probably what you want. But here in Jumpbox, you can... Um, place notes and go to other layers and play them together and this is going to probably sound horrible yeah that sounded horrible but um what you can do with jump jump box is um uh, some pretty cool stuff so i'll open up that song i was playing on Aud on audacity earlier i'll open up uh i'll open it up here in jump box also, sorry if I'm stumbly with my words today. Uh, music. Here we go. So here's the song I made. And you can see it's uh, kind of long. To change the song length, you go to edit, uh, change song length, and you can change how many bars you have. But um, 
Here, I'll, I'll, I'll play... I'll play the entire thing for you, just in case you want to listen. If you don't, you can fast forward. So yeah, that was um, the song I made for my video game. If you guys like it, tell me down in the comments. I'd love feedback. Um, even the negative feedback, because I still take that to heart so I can improve. Um, yeah, so that is about it for content creation. We also have image manipulation. And there are two very good ones that I know of that you probably know of as well. We have GIMP. And this is simple, you can make an image and draw all over it, and there are custom brushes like pepper brush, uh, there's also the regular brushes, um, stuff like that, you can change the size. It's a very straightforward application. Um, it's very easy to pick up as well. Then you have something that more, prof like, professionals do use GIMP, but there's another 
uh, one also made by KDE called Krita, which I'm not going to install because it probably has weird KDE dependencies, but uh, Krita is a very advanced image manipulation program. It's used by a lot of professionals. Um, I'll keep Dark Reader on, but you can... Um, I'm, again, I'm not going to download and open it just because I really don't want all these dependencies, but um, it's really good, trust me. You can probably get an app image of it if you're on Linux and you don't want the dependencies. If you're on KDE, just go ahead and install it. It might already be there. Um, another one is Inkscape, and personally, I am not big brain enough to know how to do vector graphics quite yet. I can do Blender, but not vector graphics yet. So I will just install Inkscape and show you what it is. Wow, that's a lot of dependencies. Anywho, um, this is oh, this is in Inkscape and uh, save. And again, I have literally no idea how to use it. Um, Basically, it's what you want to use if you want to do vector graphics. But yeah, so I'm going to remove it now. So yeah, that was my list, my guide to making stuff only in free and open source software. If you guys enjoyed, I would... Um, Love if you subscribed, liked, commented, rung the bell, you know, all that good stuff. Um, if you want my other links, like my GitLab and stuff, I send everyone to my website in case I ever need to update, uh, update these links. So like my GitLab repos, my Codeberg repos, my YouTube channel, Odyssey channel, which by the way I abandoned because I really don't like Odyssey now. Discord server, Matrix server, Revolt server, which is also abandoned because the devs started doing some weird stuff. Um, tutorials, this is just um, a thing I made. I don't know what happened to the guy up there, but save your system with SysRQ. Uh, it's a guide about how to set up SysRQ, which if you don't know, is something you can use to, like if your system freezes up, talk directly to the kernel to reboot your system safely. Uh, it's super useful. Um, you can also, uh, I'm also going to throw in a bonus, and that is text editing, like programming and stuff. Um, for programming, I consider it content creation, so it's going to be a bonus. Programming. If you want to use a terminal text editor, you can use Vim or NeoVim. My personal favorite is Helix, and that is because it has... Um, a bunch of really cool uh, features like for example if I go into command mode I have a literal freaking command menu it's so nice also I'm a rust programmer as you can see by the rust code in front of me uh, beautiful ain't it but um, basically since helix is also written in rust I have first class support of the Rust programming language in Helix. Helix supports a multitude of different languages. Like if I go to the set language menu, uh, you can see like uh, there's all these different languages, all these different languages. Helix uses tree sitters, so there's gonna be a lot. Um, but yeah, that's Helix. And if you wanted to use a GUI editor, there's LightXL, which DistroTube made a video about. I've used this for quick edits in a GUI when I'm using my file manager. It's pretty nice. It has plugin support and stuff. Um, another one which I uh, have installed actually is Codium. Codium is really nice. It's a VS Code fork. So if you don't know, VS Code is actually like uh, it's oh sorry, it's um. It's so it's kind of like the Chrome Chromium situation. Chrome is a proprietary browser, but the underlying base technology is open source. What Codium is, is it um, forks the open source base of VS Code 
And VS Code is completely proprietary. Like, the final builds on Microsoft's website are completely proprietary. What Codium does is it tries to mimic code as closely as it can in a FOSS manner. Um, so I can open up um, my Rust programming directory in here. And I can open some code. So, like, uh, here's some code. Overall, it's really nice. So, uh, if you've used VS Code, it's basically that. So, um, that was it for my list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Check out the links in the description, and I will see you all a next time. I also have a Discord server. Link on my website.